Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Chobango, and welcome back to another episode of Bossin' on a Budget. Now, this episode is going to be about one of the classic budget bosses in old school RuneScape, and that would be the Barrows Brothers. So the Barrows Brothers, um, some people call it a mini game, some people call it a boss, I'm going to call it a boss, and it is one of the more early game bosses uh, that you will be able to do on your account and hopefully with the help of this video you'll see that you do not need millions of GP worth of gear to do these bosses. If you have decent stats, all of my combat stats are over 90 but I promise you you could get rid of, uh, you could get away with this with much lower stats than that. Um, and about 200,000 coins is what we're going to use today. I also have a Barrows Teleport in my inventory, uh, but that's just to get myself to the boss when we're ready to go. So getting right into it, I'm going to go ahead and use this 200k that I have to buy some items in order to uh, complete this boss. And then from there, I'll go ahead and show you how it's done. So after purchasing all of our equipment, you can see down here in my inventory, we're left with 21,689 coins. Um, we are over here now at Barrows, but I'll go ahead and show you what we grabbed. So I grabbed a blue wizard robe top, a blue wizard hat, an amulet of glory, a mystic fire staff, um, some rune gloves from Recipe for Disaster. I bought these out of the chest. They're about 5,000 coins. And then over in the inventory, we have two prayer potions, a super strength three, a super attack three, a dragon scimitar, 10 sharks, a spade, five house teleports, and enough runes to cast fire blast 300 times. We've also set our mystic fire staff to auto cast fire blast so that we can just go ahead and use that throughout. Now, you may notice that I only have two of the combat styles. So... Arum is weak to range or melee. I prefer to just melee him because it makes my life a whole lot easier. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So we're going to go ahead and dig into this bottom left hill here. I do like to start with Darok. Um, there are some other people fighting Darok in here and I have them hidden so that's a little funny but we'll go ahead and throw on protect from melee and just cast fire blast on him till he dies. Other than that, not a whole lot to do here. It's really, really simple. So once we kill them off, we're just going to go ahead and head back out. Uh, the individual brothers aren't going to drop anything. I like to head straight over here to the west, get up on top of this second hill and just dig on down. Now, Varrock, uh, it is important. I need to say one thing about him. Well, that actually is something we're going to come back to later. Uh, so now we'll head over to the center. We're going to put our Dragon Scimitar on in order to uh, fight Arum. We'll dig down, turn on Protect from Magic in this center hill. And just go ahead and melee him. Now you can use prayers. There's no reason not to. Um, while you are down here, I'll show you it in just a second when it happens, but faces will appear on your screen. Every time that happens, your prayer will drain further. So if you look at this prayer bar right here, it just drained a whole bunch right as that face appeared. All right, well, now that that's finally over, we can just head back up into the sunlight right over here to Torax Hill, equipping our staff again because we are going to attack him with magic and pray melee once again. Four of the brothers are melee and one is magic and one attacks with range. So I don't know what happened to this little part of the uh, clip here, but my audio did get messed up. However, I will just record. So I'm now post-production. As you can see, heading to the south central hill, turning on protect range and getting our scimitar out and we'll go ahead and attack Kirill. Now Kirill can do a lot of damage to you unfortunately, but as long as you're using protect range, it really shouldn't matter. And now as we finish off Kirill, the last boss that we are going to have to uh, fight is Guthin, who's right over here in the uh, southeastern hill. We'll go ahead and get our staff back out, turn on protect from melee, uh, make sure that our prayer is uh, topped off, and then we'll attack him. So he can heal off of you for a portion of the damage that he deals. Uh, however, as long as you pray protect from melee, he's not going to be able to heal off of you at all. Because as you know, if you just do the mechanics correctly, you can completely ignore them. And that is the entire point of this series. It is to show you that you can do these bosses with terrible gear as long as you are comfortable with the mechanics. 
So with that being said, I'm always going to try to give you guys all of the information that you need to become professionals at these bosses and be able to kill them even if you don't have the money to afford the uh, best gear in the game. Now with that being said, the audio does come back on here so I'm going to let live Chobango take it the rest of the way. Talk to you about what happens when you climb down into the hidden tunnel. So you're going to go ahead and say, yeah, I'm fearless after you've killed off all of the other brothers. You will know where the tunnel is, you're going to enter the tunnel, and you'll be underground. So, you'll go ahead and start opening doors. As you open doors, monsters will spawn and attack you. You will notice here, in the top left, this is a runelite plugin, but the base game without the runelite plugin has something very similar. Now here is uh, Varrock. So, that actually just segues right into something else I was going to talk about. As you open the doors, monsters will spawn and attack you, and there is a chance that the monster that spawns will be the brother that you have not killed. So you're going to go ahead and kill him off, and everything that you kill down here is going to increase your reward potential, which you see right here in the top left. Mine is currently 58.7. Um, but as we kill off this brother, you will see that my reward potential goes up, and you want to go ahead and make sure that that hits 100% before you open up the... Uh, the chest in the middle so we killed him off now we're sitting at about 70 percent we'll just continue to kill monsters down here you can kill all of the monsters the higher combat level monsters do give you more uh potential but other than that you're just gonna follow the doors that you can open around until eventually you reach uh an area where you're able to get into the center room which it looks like right there i will be able to open that door go into the center room where the chest is and then we'll go ahead and open that up and get our reward once we do have 100 potential so we have the best chance at loot. Unfortunately, with this lower level gear, just like any other bosses, it does really slow down your uh, KC. So, like I say in all of these videos, this is not uh, gear that I recommend for you to use. The point is just to show you that you do not need great gear uh, to do this content. However, when you do come to do this content, I do recommend that you always use the best gear that you have access to, right? If you have money, go ahead and spend it. No reason to just leave it sitting in your bank. Use it to upgrade your gear. Use it to train your uh, stats. Now, right here on this last door, I'm not going to click it now, but as you can see, there will be a puzzle. If you're using rune light, uh, it'll circle the correct answer in green, but they're really not difficult. They're just patterns, uh, and the patterns are very simple. So I will go ahead and open it up this time. Once you do that correctly, you'll be able to open up the door and walk through. And when you get in here into the center, you'll click the chest once it will open, and then you click the chest the second time, and you will get your reward. Now normally it'll, it will just be runes, coins, and bolt racks, however you have a chance to get any of the Barrow's items, whether that be a Darox Axe worth about 1 mil right now, or Torag Hammers, which honestly I don't even know what those are worth. Those are probably less than this Dragon Scimitar. Now with that being said, I'll go ahead and teleport out to my house so that the screen will stop shaking for all of you. And on that note, it is time to end this video. So if you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like. It really does motivate me to keep making videos. Drop a comment down below if you'd like to suggest a boss that I should do a boss and on a budget video for in the future. And if you want to keep up with the rest of this series, go ahead and subscribe so you won't miss any of the future uploads. With all of that said, I hope you all have a great day. See ya.